Bonjour, welcome to Miss Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking, and I'm your host, Miss Lucy, and today we sure have an exciting show for you because we'll be going catfishing. And of course, after we catch all those wonderful Louisiana catfish, we will be cooking them in the kitchen. So you stay with the chef, we'll be right back. Hello, Stanley. The Louisiana Seafood Marketing Board is a proud sponsor of Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking Show. The Bayou State enjoys an outstanding culinary tradition. At the center of that tradition is seafood. And no wonder, Louisiana is one of the nation's leading seafood suppliers. And the Louisiana Department of Economic Development. Whether it's crawfish processing or meat packing, Louisiana is the business location for food processing with infrastructure, site selection assistance, and workforce training. Louisiana, the shape of food technology. What makes Louisiana so special? Our beautiful bayous and grand plantation homes surrounded by old oak trees. Our music and joie de vie. Our unique way of cooking the bounty we harvest from the land and the water. It's our communities, our businesses, our people. That's why I love Louisiana and why I want to share my precious Cajun heritage with you. Today I'll be cooking a seafood that's popular throughout Louisiana, catfish. A little later on, I'll show you how we caught these fish. Of course, you know Cajuns cook catfish often, mostly frying it. So I'll be cooking that today. And I have a good friend of mine, Chef Hans, who will show you how Creoles blacken catfish. Bonjour, Chef. Welcome. Bonjour, Lucy. Glad you could make it today. Yeah. Comment ça va, chef? Ça va bien, merci. C'est bon. Ah, and yeah. where do you originate from, chef? I came over here from Switzerland about 30 oh, years ago. Oh, great. And so you have learned a lot about Cajun and cat and uh, Creoles, don't you? Yes, I've been chef in Brandon for a couple of years in Houston. Wonderful. And so that's uh, where I you train. Best kitchen in the U.S. Great, yep. great. So you're actually Cajunized and Creolized. <laughs> Both, Well, yes. of course, I Cajunized them, you know because he, he didn't know nothing about Cajuns until he met me. And oh my God, he was he really had a real rude awakening when he met me, what, about 15 years ago? I would say at least, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. but we've been having a good time cooking ever since, because yeah. he's a chef, and I'm just a cook. Of course, when he cooks, he has someone to clean up after him, and I don't, you know, that's the difference between chefs and cooks. So, chef, you've taught me a lot because this guy <laughs> can cook really well. But today, I'm going to let him blacken catfish because, you know, Cajuns don't blacken anything. Well, of course, we might blacken stuff, chef, but we actually burn it when we blacken it. <laughs> so, you're not going to burn your catfish today, are you? No, we're just going to give it a good color without wonderful, really burning it too wonderful. much. Yeah. Well, I hope not. Well, of course, we are going to be cooking. Let me start this so pot up, start chef. It up, yeah, get it hot, yeah. it hot. We'll be cooking some wonderful catfish. We've got two types of catfish, uh, chef, because we've got the pond and the wild. Now, which do you prefer using? Do you have any preference? We'll have some fresh catfish. It would be wonderful, you know, if it's available. Just used fresh. to, Yeah, right. I mean, from the wild, yeah. Right, okay, good. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to hand it over to you because I know nothing about this. <laughs> you teach me how to do this today. Tell well, me all about this. The key to it is have a nice heavy skillet like you got here and make that nice and hot, get it almost as a smoking point. Then we have a mixture of uh, blackened seasoning which is available on the market. It has uh, many different types of peppers, chili peppers, paprika, uh -huh. onion, uh, uh -huh. garlic, everything, all the flavors are right in there. Beautiful. Now and you mix this the in color. the plant, don't you? Yes, I do. So you do have uh, uh, spices and mixes on and stuff market. on the market. Right, Chef Hans Gourmet. That's from right. Monroe, Louisiana, right, right. Okay. And uh, I worked for a while with Paul Putnam, of course. He's one of them that really started the, the blackening process uh -huh. and uh, became very famous with the redfish, black and redfish. Oh, right. But it works very well with the catfish also. Uh -huh. Well, mm -hmm. great, great. Well, you can, uh, is your skillet hot enough? Get or? It's almost getting to the point. Yes. I think we got this on four, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So we can put it, uh, some people like a little olive oil. We can use, this is a regular oil. We can put a little bit in there when it gets hot. It's almost smoking now. In the meantime, we take a little seasoning, take it a catfish. I can put it on here first and make it more even. 
and uh, just kind of almost like put a little batter on it, make it more even, then sprinkle it on there. You can put quite, it's not that much salt in it, okay? All right, well. Okay. And you can Pretty also heavy. grill this. Uh, when this is yeah. hot, you can put it on a grill made by aluminum foil, so you uh -huh. want to have it too. Right. Uh, on a good grill, I'll put a little bit of oil in it, not too much. Now you can use butter or margarine though. You yes, then you've got to be careful. I put that butter in it, the fish oh, almost at the same time. Oh, okay. We could show that, now, yes. Now is there a special side you got to use to first to in lay In the this? kitchen in the restaurant, you would use this side here first. This is where the skinny side is. Uh -huh. And you put it down this way first. Okay. It's a good question. Then when you turn it one time and you put it up, the fish is always served this All way. Right, so sure. that's really the proper way to serve it. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Well. So this is almost smoking here. Okay. Not quite. I think wow. we're getting there. That's a very thick pot. I know it's delicious. I love yeah. blackened catfish, but I'm so afraid to do it because I, I'm just afraid I'm going to burn it, most you people. know? And they, that's the problem because mm -hmm. most people cook it too much and yes. they blacken it really. I they think they're afraid it. of handling it, but right. it's not that oh. hard to do. So just a golden brown right. is all you yes. want. Yes, most okay. people, oh, sometimes they overdo it uh -huh. and they open the window and everything, the smoke's pouring out. That's too much. <laughs> if it's just yeah, nice, the dark brown, comes it's good. out to yeah. your house, you know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so right. let's see if this is about ready. It's almost smoking. Well, I can make another fillet in the meantime sure, here. Sure, sure, because you, you better cook a lot because I'm hungry today. How much today. do we cook here? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Everybody going to eat today? Oh, yes, yes. The crew enjoys Some it. nice fillets. Oh, well, these are, are real pretty. Now, yes, well, they me, are. Mr. Stanley and I went through a lot of trouble to oh, get those you? fillets. So, uh, this is a good size, by the way. If it's not too thick and not too big, it's a little easier to cook. Uh -huh. Yes. Right. Good. So Looks it's like quick. we've got some good temperature here now. Yes, all righty. Well, I'll just slap that sucker in there. And we'll all righty. Let's see how it's going to work. And always is another trick when you put it in, put it away from you instead of... Oh, well, right. That's important, okay. yeah. Now, you see, I'd have put it the other way first. And it could splatter you. <laughs> well, you know, actually... Away from you, what we're saying. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then I'd have laid it the other way. So it's starting okay. to smoke right now. Right. This is okay. just about right. Well, yeah. good, good. So yeah, I'll let you go ahead and do that, and I'm going to teach you how Cajun would fix their catfish. All right. Of course, you know, we always fry catfish, and this is how I do my catfish. I put salt and pepper in my cornmeal. Okay, just like this. Now, I've learned this. Chef, you asked me what I was doing with the water on the set. That's yeah. vinegar. So when <laughs> we fry catfish, you know how it has that smell throughout the house? Right. Well, that vinegar will absorb it, so I'm not going to, you know, make a mess today Cajun with it. Trick. Right, a Cajun <laughs> trick. It's really a Melissa trick. Then you take your catfish fillets, and see how a chef, he uses not his hands, but a Cajun uses her hands. All there right. And I fry this real fast. In hot grease, you take your beautiful fillets, see how gorgeous they are, and you cover them real well. Real good. It looks good. Very good. Yeah, hey. Cajuns know how to fry fish, chef. That's one thing. Because that's what they do. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and do these. I guess I can put three in there, huh, chef? Yeah, uh, I would right, say it would work. Good, good. Very good. All righty. Wipe all my hands. Whoa, yours is looking good. Looks like we got some good temperature. Yeah. Man, we're cooking now, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, all the smoke's flying too, chef. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the fun of it, though. Let me get this ready here. When these come out, I mean, you get them out, they're gorgeous. Let me check them. Yeah. Okay, they're coming out pretty soon. See, this is so quick to cook. Both of them. You can actually be doing both at the same time, right? That's right. Oh, look at that. Oh, look That's how gorgeous. That is beautiful. Man, you haven't lost a touch, have you? <laughs> if you do, <laughs> thank you. If you do the seasoning, you have it too hot and really smoking and burning it, it makes it a little bitter. Okay. So we make it a nice dark brown. Right. Oh, that's gorgeous. Let me check mine now. Yes, this is frying real you pretty the too. There. Yeah, let me flip these over a little bit. You gotta kind of be careful. You don't want to break your catfish up. And if you do, that's all right, too. Oh, those onions are frying. See, that's the beauty of it. You can also eat the onions. See, they come out of the pot. Onion, huh? Yeah, the yo-yo. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Wow, that's what I like. I like to fry them real pretty. Now, the reason for the onion, Chef, is, is twofold. I check the fire on my grease, really. Mm -hmm. And then it also keeps it from burning. Right. So that's, that's really it. See, okay, well, we can take our catfish out. I think yours is ready to Almost, go. Almost, yeah. Gotta Mine just... is too. That's good. Golden brown catfish. Oh, they got some good temperature now. Yeah. All right. Okay. Very good. Well, that was quick and easy. Whoop. Let me turn this one over here. Let me turn my fire off. See how gorgeous and beautiful. This is wonderful. And Jeff got, got his ready to here. go. Put that on that platter. Right. Yeah. You got this, that platter right here yes for that? Yes, sir. That's what it's for. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Now, what I would suggest, only thing you put really on here, no sauce or anything, just a little bit of lemon. Maybe right. squeeze a little lemon on Correct, here. Correct, right. It's delicious. Or maybe a little crab meat, you know? Oh, really now, now you're good. talking. Chef, that I really enjoyed good. having you on the show today. Thank you so much for you. coming and cooking with me. Thank you. <laughs> and now that we've cooked our catfish, let me show you what will happen when two old Cajuns go fishing in a boat. Out to gorgeous Lake Maripaw with Mr. Stanley Daigle and Stanley Jr., where we will be catfishing. They're professionals, so I'm sure we'll catch buku fish today. The hoop nets have been located. Mr. Stanley reels them in using a big winch, much easier than the old way by hand. But it's still a good workout. Guess nothing real good comes easy. This is the most exciting part. When we find out what we've caught, the fish don't want to come out of the water because they know their destination once they come aboard. But we can't count our fish until they're in the boat. Look out for the sliding catfish, Stanley. These need to be sorted by size. Smaller ones go back into the water, and we eat the big ones. While Stanley sorts, Stanley Jr. prepares the nets to be thrown back out for the next day's catch. He washes the nets with bleach to kill any fungus, then rebates them. Meanwhile, the boxes are filling up, and the catch is not transferred to the holding box which has been iced down. Wow. I like that This Opelousa's cat will go home with me for Cuvillon. The nets have been rebated and are thrown back into the water. And Mr. Stanley knows where each and every one of his nets are located. But don't ask him where, because he won't tell you. Then it's off to another location to check more nets. Isn't this beautiful? You can't find a view like this when you're working in an office or a kitchen either, as far as that goes. Wonder what this one will have. Oh my gosh, how pretty. Whoa. Is that too pretty? Oh. Oh, messes. No? No? Oh, where is that? way. Oh, wait. Then we're off to another set of nets. I'm still standing. So I'm going to find out where is it? Oh, no. Oh, but no. Oh, but no. Oh, but no. Oh, but we're gonna eat good today, huh? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna catch some fish. I just can't stand this suspense, but we'll soon know. Wow, now that's some fish. What a catch. We hit catfish jackpot. Now the sorting begins again. Smaller ones are thrown back. 
They're not leaf. <laughs> but there's plenty of larger ones to be boxed. <laughs> Seems like we'll need the help of a shovel to handle all of these fish. After sorting the fish ice down before we deliver them to the fish processor. They keep everything. We may have caught the fish, but our day's work is not over yet. When we get to the processor, the fish must be unloaded and then weighed. Can you imagine we actually caught 1,800 pounds of fish in one day? They are iced down again before being prepared for market. This is the biggest catch of the day, a 16-pounder. The large fish are skinned manually. You need a sharp knife and a pair of fish pliers to do the job. The smaller ones are run over a skinner, a machine which easily skins the fish. And after a hard day's work, here are two catfish that are ready for my frying pan. Well, you've wondered what happens when two old Cajuns go fishing, and now you know a lot of fish are caught. Well, now let me show you what I would fix along with my fried catfish and my blackened catfish today. Of course, you can't have a fish fry or blackened catfish without hush puppies, and that's what I'm gonna do first. My niece, BJ, taught me how to do this. I've got self-rising flour in this bowl here and self-rising cornmeal, that's very important. So to this, I'm gonna add my salt and pepper Season that real well. All right, good. Uh, you want that real good hot flavor in there. And of course, whip up some egg yolk in here. Of course, mix that up in here. To that, you have some cream corn, which, ooh, it adds to that flavor. And good old cream corn in there. Okay, I'll just leave that here. Mix that up real well. Okay. And grated onions. That adds to it too. Very good. Is that a good flavor? Mix that up real good. And your onion tops. You have to have green onion tops. Now you can add anything you want to this because you know how that's how Cajuns cook. They just throw everything in the pot. Make it look real good and taste as well. Now, you see, it's not quite the consistency that I needed, so I'm gonna add milk today. Now, you can add milk or you can add beer, whichever one you prefer. Some people rather the milk flavor and some people like the beer flavor. So it's entirely up to you. Alrighty, that's mixed up real pretty. Okay, very good. Use that old hand by here. Yep, that always comes in handy. You always got your finger with you. Now be sure you don't drop too many of these in one pot. Just very small teaspoonfuls. Let them brown real, real pretty. Doesn't take long. You can make a whole bunch of these. Because actually, when they get to eating them, they fluff up that self-rising flour, and oh, it's just in self-rising cornmeal. Now what I'm gonna show you in a hurry here, because this is so quick and easy. That's what Cajun cooking's all about. You have your coleslaw. And of course, I'm gonna just throw some mayonnaise in here. You know, Cajuns throw everything in the pot. So, we're gonna that, and some salt and pepper. A little dab of sugar and some shredded carrots. That's all there's to it. Whoops, all good cooks are messy cooks. I'm sure must be good, because I'm very messy. But as I, I remember telling you, I don't have anyone to wash my dishes. I'm just a cook. Mix all this very well. And you can always add more mayonnaise, or mayonnaise, of course, I like to say mayonnaise, but Melissa would correct me. And there's your gorgeous slop. Look at your hush puppies. Ooh, they are just gorgeous. Browning perfect. Very good. That's all there's to it. Very quick and easy. 
got wonderful, delicious brown hush puppies. See, some of them brown before the others because you put them in first. Good, you flip them over. Oof, they are so tasty. I love hush puppies, but you know, we never fried hush puppies when I was growing up. We always just had french fries, but mama never did hush puppies. I guess we just, Cajuns didn't do those, but since I got a little older, I got to where I, I did this when I had fried fish instead of the french fries. See how gorgeous they are. Beautiful, very, very tasty. So now I'm gonna show you how I would do a wonderful dessert. I've got a fantastic cake here that is delicious. This is a carrot cake. Of course, I had carrots left over from my slaw, so I'm gonna use them today. Now to this, I've got some sugar, so I'm gonna whip these up here. These eggs with the sugar, okay? Whip them up real well. And this recipe comes from a very dear friend of mine, Laura Bass, from Memphis, Tennessee. And Laura Bass, or this is how a chef would whip up. Very good. Laura Bass just taught me how to do this, and it is just great. Of course, I'm gonna add the oil to it. Mix that up real well. Okay. See. Very good. This is when I'm gonna start using my blender, because it'll be so much easier, my mixer. So here we go. I'm gonna put this together. Now, I'm gonna mix the flour stuff next. It's gotta have flour. This is a little space thing. <laughs> it's what I do my nutmeg in. And of course, I never, never use the old, um, the mix already shredded and done because fresh nutmeg is wonderful. So this is what I use. Of course, about a teaspoonful of it. Here's your, okay, allspice and your cinnamon. Throw that all together. Baking soda. That's the only thing I use, okay? A little salt, okay? I'm gonna mix this in together. All right, very good. Now, all your dry ingredients. Now, this is the vanilla flavor, which I'm gonna add to my mixer. Doing good, mixing very well. Now to this, I'm gonna have to add the flour. So, I'm gonna raise it up. Of course, I'll be spilling all over. Okay, okay. Uh, let's do it this way. This is it. Mix your flour in there. Just throw it in. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. All right, good. Woo! <laughs> See how messy I am? Very good. So you mix this up very well. And actually, what you need to do to this now is add your pineapple and all your other ingredients, which are raisins. I like the white raisins and the coconut. And of course, since it's a carrot cake, I think you better add some carrots to it. You mix this all very well in your blender, and then you fold in your uh, pecans at the end. So I won't do this for you since I've got this beautiful sample here already made, Miracle of Television. Of course, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put them, all the batter, in this cake pan after I've sprayed it with some nonstick coating, and I'm gonna bake it at 350 for about an hour and a half. So that finishes up your beautiful cake, which once it's all together, I'm gonna ice it with this beautiful icing right here. So, of course, catfish has become popular, naturally. Not only in the state of Louisiana. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe and that they'll allow you to cook more catfish at home. Strolling along the mighty Mississippi River in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and it is such a gorgeous view and so relaxing. And while I'm enjoying this, I want to share with you a letter from one of my fans, Miss Gloria Fettit from Harvey, Louisiana. Gloria writes, Dear Lucy, just a note to tell you how much I enjoy your cooking show. I made your easy coconut cake for a church function, and I must tell you how much it was enjoyed. I look forward to see what you will cook on your TV show each week. I gave my daughter your cookbook for a present when she got married, and now I want one for myself. 
She has cooked many of your recipes and has been pleased with each one. Thanks again for such an enjoyable cooking show. Sincerely, Gloria. Thank you, Gloria, for sharing this letter with me, and thank you for watching me today. Look us up on the World Wide Web at lpb.org. The Louisiana Seafood Marketing Board is a proud sponsor of Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking Show. The Bayou State enjoys an outstanding culinary tradition. At the center of that tradition is seafood. And no wonder, Louisiana is one of the nation's leading seafood suppliers. And the Louisiana Department of Economic Development. Whether it's crawfish processing or meat packing, Louisiana is the business location for food processing with infrastructure, site selection assistance, and workforce training. Louisiana, the shape of food technology.